Awesome app developers, it's Prof G, and I know we said in our last video that we were done, but the late Steve Jobs would often like to pop up at the end of product launches and say, there's one more thing. Well, we've got just one more lesson for the You Are Awesome app. We'll add some simple animation to subtly fade our image and text out and then in as it transitions to the new image and text. And we'll also introduce the tint modifier so that we can make the tint of our controls consistent. And we'll modify our accent color for both light mode and dark mode and show you how you can test this in the preview and in the simulator. Let's polish up your app. Now our app works as expected, but watch closely. You'll notice that the transition between images and text is instantaneous. Some might even call it abrupt. Well, one way we can make our app look nicer is to offer a bit of a fade out and then in as we update our image and our text. And this is super easy to do in SwiftUI. Now, animations in SwiftUI are very powerful. There are a lot of options, and we'll cover some of these in future lessons with other apps. But for now, we'll use the most basic options with the animation modifier. Let's start by animating our image. And to add the animation modifier, just type dot animation under your image view at the end of your modifiers. Now, one thing to watch for as you use Swift is to see if anything that you're using is deprecated. For example, I'm showing two options here. One of them is grayed out and shows a yield sign to the right. Now, if I highlight this, I see a yellow yield sign and a warning that says this was deprecated in iOS 15. Deprecation means that this technique is an old technique and it's going away. This happens when Apple makes changes to its development platform, usually adding improvements or clarity. So if you use the old technique, this usually doesn't break your app right away. The transition usually doesn't go away for a couple of versions of the operating system, but it's always a good idea to avoid using deprecated techniques. Now Apple tries to make it as easy as possible on developers. They suggest to us right here what we should be using instead. See how it says use with animation or animation value? So we're going to use animation value. This is the other option, so highlight that, and it says this will apply the given animation to this view when the specified value has changed. Let's press return and give this a try. Now what are these animation options? Well, we can use dot notation to reveal them. Press a dot right now, and we see a bunch of options in here. Default, ease in, out. There's also an ease in and ease out. If you scroll, you'll find a linear. There's a spring in here too. I'm going to put off describing these for now. Let's just select the default, and then let's tab over, and the value is the variable that will trigger the animation if it's changed. Now, since we change lots of values each time we click our button, we could use any of these values, message number, image number. I'm just going to enter message string here, but it could have been any of the other ones. So what this is saying is, Whenever the message string changes, perform the default animation on the image view. Let's try this out in preview and see how things look. Click the button, and whoa, that was nice. Subtle, but you saw a slick fade in when we first show an image. And once we could see an image, we saw for every subsequent animation, the current image faded out while the subsequent one faded in. Really slick. Hey, do you think we could do this with the text view too? Let's give it a try. So we'll highlight and copy our animation modifier. We're going to paste it under text. Press the button, and ho, oh, look at that. It's working on the text view too. So we've set up animation modifiers to animate whenever the message string changes on both the text view and the image view, which happens each time the show message button is pressed. Nice. Now, one thing to notice, the fade seems a bit more noticeable on the text. You might decide that this is, oh, maybe I'd describe it as disorienting on the text, more so than on the image view. Some users have an extreme vertigo, and in rare occasions, fadey transitions like this can actually be unpleasant to view. So you definitely want to use things in moderation. And oftentimes, new app developers are so excited about animations that they put animations on everything. Be careful, you don't want to be the person that writes the app that made somebody puke. Once again, our friends at Apple have user interface guidelines on how best to use animation in your app, so do check these out if you have questions. Typically, animations are good when they provide a visual cue that draws the user attention to an action they can perform, or if an animation helps confirm that an action was performed. Think something like a progress bar or an activity indicator. Now, we could, of course, just remove the animation modifier on the text view, but this is also an opportunity for us to show how we can speed up the animation so the transition suddenly fades, but it would be faster and less jarring. Here's how we do it. First, let's comment out the animation modifier under the text view. You could delete this if you want, but I'm going to keep mine here just as something to compare the change with. Then I'll type dot animation, and I'm going to select the option ease in out with duration. So we'll highlight that. Ease in out means the animation will start slowly, get up to normal speed, then it will get slower toward the end of the animation. Or put another way, it'll ease into the animation and then ease out of the animation as it approaches the end. 
Again, this is a really nice technique, so animations don't seem so abrupt. Ease in out is actually the default animation. If you wanted an animation to progress at the same speed throughout, you could choose linear, or if you wanted to choose just ease in or ease out, if you only wanted to subtly ramp up or ramp down your animation, those are other options you could use. Again, we'll explore these more in a future lesson. Let's select ease in out with duration. First, we can tab over to value. We know that's gonna be message string, so we can enter that there. And I'm gonna shift tab back to duration. The duration is just how long the animation should take. And for us, we're simply using this default fade animation. So the duration is how long it takes the transition to fade from one view value to the next. This value is in seconds. I tried out a few values. I'm gonna enter 0.15. Always make sure that you add a zero point in front of decimal values if you have a value less than one. So let's try this out. You should see it's less jarring. Now that's nice, and if you wanted to, you can try this out with a larger number, like one. And that really does not look good, but uh, you can see at least it's taking one second in between transitions, so you know what the duration means. So let's head back to 0 0.15. So nice work. Now you've got some very basic animations that provide a nice subtle transition between view values. And I'm going to delete this animation line that I commented out before. Now, another thing that we might want to do with this app is to change the tint color for the controls. Green on is Apple's default for the tint on a toggle. And we're also using the default tint for the prominent bordered button style, which is blue. But we can change both of these with the tint modifier. You certainly don't have to, but it would give our app a more consistent look. So I'll first head over to the toggle view and add dot tint and pass in dot blue. And now the background of the on option on the toggle looks more like the button background. Now I can also pass in a different color if I want, like dot indigo. And I can go down to the button and I can add a tint modifier underneath the button, passing in dot indigo here as well. But also know that since both of these controls are in the H stack, I can cut out those two tint modifiers and instead put one tint modifier below the H stack. I'll collapse the H stack and the code folding ribbon so it's easier to see. So that's a quicker way to apply the tint to all of the items within a given stack. And I can use command slash to toggle the comments on and off so we confirm there's only one modifier at work here. Now another thing that you might want to do is to work with the accent color. So why don't we head over to the asset catalog and give that a try. Open the project navigator and click assets, then make sure that the accent color is selected and we should see the single universal option selected. But let's work with both light mode and dark mode colors. So click the universal box, but then open up the attributes inspector and change appearance from none to any comma dark. And now we can set our colors the same way we showed in our colors lesson. So with the any appearance box first selected, click on the show color panel button on the bottom of the attributes inspector. In the color pencil area, I'm gonna select blueberry. And then I'll click on the dark box and I'll select my dark mode accent color to how about red? Or pardon me, it looks like the actual name for this color is maraschino. And then let's try this out. So we'll head back to content view and I'm gonna change my tint to dot accent color. That's interesting because we see dot notation uses dot accent color here. I didn't have to type in color and then pass in the string, capital A, capital C accent color. So dot accent color gets us the accent color we were just working on. And look at that. Our controls now have the blueberry tint. Let's try dark mode. One warning, in the version of Xcode that I'm using, this is a little bit finicky. So if you find that dark mode isn't showing up with your proper color options, you can quit out of Xcode, then reload in your project. Hopefully that will start working. So I see icons down here below in our preview canvas and find the one that looks like toggles. The tooltip for this option, we'll call it device settings. Just click the color scheme toggle and that'll turn on dark mode. And oh, look at that. It worked for me. We can see the preview in dark mode and we can see our cool red accent color. Nice. Now you can also build and run in the simulator and change to dark mode too. So with the simulator running, let's head up to the features menu in the simulator, select toggle appearance and look at that. Dark mode looking good in the simulator as well. What about our launch screen? Well, if I double click the home button in the simulator toolbar, swipe up to close the UR Awesome app, then tap to relaunch UR Awesome, I can see I get my launch screen and now it's in dark mode. Nice. That happens so fast you can feel free to try it again. But yep, our launch screen background is definitely in dark mode. With these tweaks, you might start feeling like the Duchess or Duke of Design, and you should. Nice work, Swifter. Lots more learning to come in future lessons and apps. Tweet at me with an image of what you built if you want to be in the drawing for the weekly sticker. Keep hacking.